Hey there, in this video we are going to look at using the method of isolating the variable and the square root principle to find zeros of quadratic functions and solutions to quadratic equations. Let's look at that right now. Alright, now if we want to find the x-intercepts of this uh, quadratic function here, uh, the key first of all is realizing that to find the x-intercepts, y has to be zero. If you think about the graph, wherever the x-intercepts are, they're along this axis somewhere, and anywhere along that axis, y is zero. So to start with, we're going to substitute y being zero, and then we're going to solve for x. Now, when the function you're working with is in vertex form, x is in one place, we can just isolate that using inverse operations and something that we're going to call the square root principle when we get to that stage. So for our first step here I have a choice. I can either isolate the x on the the right side of the equation or I can isolate it on the left side of the equation. Now if I wanted to isolate it on the right side of the equation I would move this 8 over or if you prefer to think about it take away 8 from both sides. Now I'm not going to do that in this case because I'm actually going to move this over because it is negative. And if I move that over, it'll become positive, and then I don't have to deal with dividing by negatives. This equation that says negative 2x squared plus 8 is the same. It's equivalent to 2x squared equals 8. And that is the same as x squared equals 4 if I divide both sides by 2. Now let me put that up here. We have x squared is 4. If x squared is 4, what I can do now is I can take the square root of both sides. I can take the square root of that and the square root of that because the square root of x squared here is just x. The square root of x squared is just x. So those are inverse operations. It's just like multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3. Those two operations are inverses. Square root and squaring are inverse operations. So if x squared is 4, x is the square root of 4. And we also need to think about the fact that it is plus or minus the square root of 4. Or in other words, it's plus or minus 2. Let's think about that again here. If something squared is 4, the something can be plus or minus 2. It's not just plus 2, it's plus or minus 2. This is a short form of writing plus 2 or minus 2. Those two different numbers just written in a short form there. All right, Those are your two x-intercepts. You can check it pretty simply by substituting it back into that original equation. Remember that if I put that in there for x, it should give me 0 for y. So you can, you can think that through. I'm going to put that over, over here. If I take my y equals negative 2x squared plus 8, and I'll put my number in and work it out real quick here for you and just check. All right, so that works. That's a way of checking. Substitute it in and see if it works. All right, let's try another one here. Now the difference here is that uh, we don't just have x squared somewhere, we have x plus 1 squared here. But this is still vertex form for this equation of this function here. And x only appears once, so we're going to be able to do this nicely by isolation. Again, if we're looking for the x-intercepts, we need to substitute 0 for y, and then solve for x. So we're going to solve this resulting equation. Right? Once I substitute the 0 and I just have a quadratic equation and I'm going to solve it by isolation. First we're going to isolate this whole thing. Then we're going to apply the square root principle. So if this time I'm going to actually move the 9 to the other side because then that becomes positive. And then what I have left is this. Right? I'm still I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm just going to isolate that as though it's its, it's, its own variable. The next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 4. I mean, you can show it if you want. You can do this, or you can just show the result after you do that, which is going to be 9 over 4 equals x plus 1 all squared. I can do a couple of things. I could turn that into a decimal at this point, 
But this one actually is going to work nicely with what I'm going to do here, which is now I have this something squared is this number. So I'm going to just take the square root of both sides. Essentially, I'm thinking like this. You can write that if you want, or you can just write down what the result is after you do that. The square root of 9 over 4 is the square root of the other side. The square root of this other side here is just the square root and the square cancel each other out and you just have x plus 1. So I can just write x plus 1 there. If something squared is 9 quarters, then the something is the square root of 9 quarters plus or minus because it could always be positive or negative. When you square a positive or square a negative, you get that positive value there. Now if I take this up here, I have, we'll write it the other way around this time, we'll put that on that side, plus or minus the square root of 9 quarters, those numbers actually, uh, you don't need to go to a decimal because you can do the square root of each of those. You can actually make this plus or minus square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2. Since that one happens to work out, you can just write it like that. If you wanted to, you could have written this as plus or minus 2.25. You could have done the square root and got you would get plus or minus 1.5. Whether you work with fractions or decimals, it is fine. And then what I need to do is if I have x plus 1 is equal to that value, I'm going to move this 1 over here and I'm going to make it negative 1 plus or minus 3 over 2 or negative 1 plus or minus 1.5 whichever way you would like to do it. If you're working with fractions, well, let's do it with decimals first. If we're working with the decimal there, one of my answers is going to come from doing negative 1 plus 1.5. One of my answers is going to come from doing negative 1 minus 1.5. So I'm going to get 0 0.5 or negative 2.5. If I had done that with the fractions, well, what I would have had to do is Instead here, I would have had uh, three halves. And what I would have had to do right here is I would have had to think plus three halves or minus three halves. And I would have had to do a little bit of fraction work, but it wouldn't have been that hard because I, instead of one, could have just thought of it as two halves. And I would have got one half here, which is what I had before I had 0.5. Or here I would have had to think of that as two halves. And I would have had negative five halves whichever you prefer. So your answer would have been 0.5 or negative 2.5 if you're working with decimals or one half or negative five halves if you're working with fractions. All right, let's try the last thing here, solving this last equation. Now that's a quadratic equation. It's not a function, but you can apply the same property here to solve this equation by isolating. Now you're going to know that isolation uh, is a good strategy here because x only appears once. If you had an equation that had an x squared in it and an x term that you couldn't combine together, you're going to have to try something else you're going to learn later. But for this, since x is only, only appears once, you can do it by isolation. So at first, again, I'm going to isolate this squared term and then eventually apply the square root principle. It's three times out of six. So then if I divide both sides by three, I'm going to get two over there. Right? If you want to show it, you can. You can say divide by 3, divide by 3, but it's not necessary to do that. At this point, you're going to apply the square root principle. If something squared is 2, then the something is plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, this is not one that we can work out like we did the previous two. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now, and then eventually I'll, I'll uh, go to the calculator if I want a decimal answer. I'm going to move the 2 over to the other side. So I have x is, I'm going to write it this way, positive 2, this minus 2 turns into a positive 2 on the other side, plus or minus square root of 2. Now again, this is, this is two values. This is 2 plus the square root of 2, or it's 2 minus the square root of 2. I can go to my calculator and find out what number is that I need to work out. So then I can go 2. First of all, I can do the plus 1, plus square root of 2, and that's 3.41 roughly. And then I can go to minus square root of 2, and then it gives me that one. Uh, so 3.41 and 0.59 if I rounded it.
So roughly 3.41 or 0 0.59. This is what x is equal to. This, I have to say x is approximately equal to that because I've rounded it off a little bit. This is called an exact answer because that's as far as I can go before I have to start rounding it off. This is called an approximate answer because it's rounded off, you know, it's close, but it's not exact. All right, so that is uh, using uh, isolation and the square root principle to find x-intercepts of quadratic functions and solutions to quadratic equations.